Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Justine and in this video I wanted to make a quick tutorial for you about how I use my stream deck <laughs> for looping in Ableton and doing a bunch of other like quick keys for Ableton and basically what's really cool about this is you can take the stuff that I'm going to tell you in this tutorial and you can kind of just use it to map whatever you want and just kind of go crazy. So the same process applies for anything that you want to map. So let's get into it. As I mentioned in another video, um, my music streaming series Twitch looping setup, which I will link here for you um, at about the five minute mark. Um, you can see that I do use the Stream Deck to help with my loops. And if you're curious about the MIDI controllers that I use for streaming, check out that video and it'll give you a little more info on the other MIDI controllers I use. So this one, the Stream Deck I use in conjunction with those other ones, um, just to kind of help me get all my bases covered for all the MIDI controls and buttons that I need to use. And something that's kind of cool, this isn't sponsored by Elgato or anything, but I do really like the Stream Deck and the Elgato foot pedal, foot controller. It's really handy because you can use it the same exact way and map buttons to Ableton so that you can have a cup, it has three buttons on it. So you can map those to quick keys. Like maybe you want to mute your microphone or mute a certain instrument or something like that that you just need to do with your foot. So some examples, somebody's vacuuming, sorry about the noise in the background, but some examples of how I use the Stream Deck, um, I've mapped different vocal effects like reverb and delay so that I can quickly turn them off and on and talk between songs or whatever um, so that people aren't you know, hearing my voice sounding like it's in a cave when I'm just trying to have a conversation. And um, also when I have a loud instrument, like my electric violin, it has a lot of gain, so it has that kind of hiss sound, you know? and it adds a lot of background noise, as you can hear there. So I have a button mapped to my Stream Deck to just turn that off and on really quick um, so that I only turn it on when I'm actually gonna use it. It's useful for an instrument that doesn't have a volume knob that you can just turn off you know, on the instrument itself. So that's just another way that I've used this Stream Deck, um, but I've also mapped like radio effect for my voice or um, start and stop my loops, launch a scene in Ableton, and um, let's see what else, that's pretty much it. Just my different, you know, instrument controls and stuff like that. Okay, so we're in Ableton now. I just, uh, don't be overwhelmed by all this stuff. It looks like there's like everything happening here right now and that's not really the point, but I just wanted to show you my, my current setup and so you could see how I use it, what it looks like. So when I open up my MIDI controls, which is this button up here in the upper right hand corner, if you click MIDI there, um, you can see here, right above me, this whole big list of MIDI mappings. And a lot of those are my stream decks. So I just wanna make a quick note, if you do have other things already mapped um, with MIDI, then just make sure you check these CC numbers over here and make sure that they're not um, coinciding. Is that the right word? They're not using the same number as a different MIDI mapping that you already have. Otherwise, you're gonna be activating two things at once and it's gonna be chaos. Complete chaos. <laughs> so double check your numbers. I just wanna mention that real quick. But this is what mine looks like right now. And like I said, it's really handy because I can turn the reverb, like you can use return tracks over here in the upper right corner um, to go in and add your reverb and turn it off and um, different things like that. Actually, I have reverb and delay mapped to the same button. So I have a reverb plus delay effect for when I'm singing. So super nice, really handy for a, for a live setup. So now that you've seen what it looks like over here in my project, let's go ahead and open up a new project, start from scratch, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I would go about setting up the Stream Deck in Ableton. And this is for Windows. Um, there might be some slight changes for Mac. Uh, it shouldn't be too, too diff different, but um, personally, I've only done this on Windows, so I can only speak for Windows. So I'd love if somebody has done this for Mac, if you could leave a comment or something and help people out, that'd be super cool. This is a fresh project, as you can see, you got your two MIDI um, tracks here and then your two audio ones. This is just my vocals for the tutorial. And it doesn't have any MIDI mappings, as you can see here. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first things first, there's a website that is super handy. I will link it in the description. They go over all this stuff in a little more detail if you would like to read more. 
Um, but I'm just gonna kind of give you an overview of the things that are absolutely necessary and uh, kind of give it to you in video form um, of the way that I did it. So, like I said, it'll be linked in the description below so you can read more if you'd like. So, if you're in Windows, um, sometimes you need a MIDI port. It might be required to connect the Stream Deck to your DAW. You're gonna need to install this software called Loop MIDI. I'll have that linked in the description as well, and it's also linked on their website. But if you click that, go ahead and just install Loop MIDI. Once you have it installed, it's going to look like this. And um, it's really easy. It seems confusing and weird, and you don't really need to know that much. You just need to make these two things, okay? So in order to make it, you're going to name your port. You name it first before you hit the plus two, by the way. Just letting you know that ahead of time. So I'm not gonna actually create it, but you're gonna do the Stream Deck 2 DAW. Uh, there we go. And then you're going to hit this plus icon here and then you'll do the same. So it'll pop up just like how I have it here. And then if you do DAW to stream deck, like how I have it there, hit the plus icon again, you're going to come up with these two. <laughs> Ignore the red. It's just cause I deleted it. It's fine. So you're going to have these two here. Okay. So this is how your stream deck is actually going to communicate with Ableton. And for me, this was confusing when I set it up and you could research it more to understand it better, but honestly, this is really all you need to know. So uh, you can also, when you close this, you'll see it down here, uh, boom. And you can just click configure loop MIDI to pull it back up again. If you need to, you just go configure loop MIDI and then you can change things if you want to. Um, but also I would make sure these are checked, start minimized and auto start loop MIDI so that you don't have any issues and you don't have to think about it when you open uh, Ableton, it's already gonna be running. And if you ever have issues with it, just um, stop loop MIDI and then restart it again. Cause that does happen to me sometimes where it'll glitch out for whatever reason and I will just restart it if it doesn't seem like my stream deck is communicating with Ableton. Another element of this that is important, like what's that? is you go into your options and preferences in Ableton. Um, this looks like chaos, but all <laughs> that matters here is you see this uh, MIDI ports here and note it's not listed anywhere here. This is fine. Just go to MIDI ports here and you have to just make sure wherever it is in Stream Deck to DAW, make sure that track and remote are selected and see how in DAW to Stream Deck is here. Make sure those two are also checked on that and then scroll down and then you'll see out. Stream Deck to DAW, DAW to Stream Deck, nothing is checked here. So make it match there and then you should be working now, but nothing has really happened yet because we haven't actually mapped anything to the Stream Deck. But that's step one, you need the loop MIDI. So you have that set up. So now we're ready to set up the Stream Deck. This is what my Stream Deck looks like if you're curious um, as of right now. I have my mic and I have my mic effects. I have a chorus effect, a radio effect, like I explained in the intro, and I have a stop all tracks, launch scene one, launch scene two, because those are the main scenes that I end up using, and then any other scenes, I can just use my MIDI controller for those. And like I said at the beginning of this, you can kind of do this however you want. This is just how I do it. So uh, feel free to just take my tips and adapt it to your setup however you want. So. I made another folder just to show you from scratch what this is going to look like. So what I would suggest doing on your stream deck, um, let's pretend it's empty like this. I would create a folder so you could do right click, create folder, which is what I did here. And I titled it MIDI tutorial, but you can name it too. Like you choose an icon like live, like what I did there. Okay. So you have your folder and then, so now you have all these slots. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go, if you click this button right here, Elgato marketplace, and you need to install this MIDI control change to your stream deck. So when you open up marketplace, I did did this a long time ago and I think it used to be a little bit different than it is now. But um, if you go in there and just search under plugins for the Stream Deck, type in MIDI, and then uh, this one will come up called MIDI by, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Tr Trevliga Spell, okay? <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Download that. Um, it should be free, but I, I'm not totally sure because like when I, when I did it a long time ago, it was free, but uh, I didn't have to like put it in a cart or anything. So anyways, uh, all you need to do, once you have it showing up here, um, you just type in here, you'll see all of your 
plugins for your Stream Deck here. Um, and you just need to type MIDI. There it is. So you're gonna drag and drop once you have this in here. Drag and drop this control change slash NRPN to one of your blank spots. So this is going to be your first MIDI control. So we'll call this one, let's just say we wanna be able to turn our mic on and off. Um, so if you wanna mute yourself to go, you know, <laughs> yell at something or, <laughs> or whatever and you don't want anybody else to hear it, just go in here and type in mic, you know, just like that, whatever. <laughs> However you wanna set it up there. Microphone, and then you're gonna select channel, let's just do channel one. Channels just give you more options if you're using a million MIDI uh, mappings, you can select different channels when you fill up one channel, then you can go to the next channel and start filling that one up and then so on and so forth. So since we're just starting, we're just going to do channel one. And then command, you know, to be totally honest with you, I don't really know why these all have names next to them when you drop it down, but you see how they all have numbers. You have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Just select zero. <laughs> I already tested this and it does work. So you just go channel one and then just start with zero. And then for this one, you have this button type here. Like I said, you can go way more in depth with this if you want to, but I'm just gonna give you the very basics of how you do this. So button type. When you drop this down, you're gonna see push, toggle, VPOT, scrub wheel, hold, fader, cycle. They're all different options of how this button is going to react when you push it. So for this specific one, where you just want to turn your mic on and off, that's going to be a toggle. So most of them are just going to be a toggle, just FYI. So just play around with that when you start experimenting with different MIDI controls. So, cause we, yeah, we want to toggle the mic off and then we want to push the mic, push the button again <laughs> to turn the microphone back on. So that's a toggle. Value here, this 127 for on and off should be set to zero. Cause that's like, maximum, minimum. We want full opening, full close. So we don't want some in-between velocity or value. So 127 and zero. MIDI outport, you want to select your stream deck to DAW here, which is why we set up that loop MIDI thing before, because it's telling this stream deck, it's like, okay, I want you to go to the DAW. You're gonna control the DAW, and the DAW is going to communicate with you on the stream deck. So of course you put MIDI import as the opposite, DAW to stream deck. So once you have those set up, you should be communicating with Ableton, but not yet because we haven't actually mapped this. So see how we have channel one, command zero, all right? And if you want, you can change this. If you're familiar with the Stream Deck, you can change your icon and make it look way prettier than that because that looks horrible. <laughs> so now we have our button, okay? So then go back to Ableton. And now you should be able to see too that you have your button showing up on, on the Stream Deck, right? So you go into MIDI in Ableton, and then you're gonna select the button you want, which in this case, to turn off the mic, you're going to select, let me show the info. Okay, this button is called Track Activator. Click on that, and then you're gonna hit your button. So now you see that, channel one, command zero. It's right there. And then you're gonna see it here, channel one, CC, command zero. And then it's going to show your path and speaker on. And this part doesn't matter for this situation. So now when we turn off the MIDI, that button, <laughs> why did I put that down, okay? When, when you push this button, it's turning your mic off, off and on. So that's literally it. It's super easy. Once It just feels complicated when you're first setting it up. So now, like I said, you can take the same concept and apply it to different things. You can turn it off and on different instruments. You could set up the reverb. I'll just show you that really quick because it's a little bit different the way you set that up. Um, so for that one, what we'd want to do is go back to our stream deck here. We need to make another MIDI Mm, what should we call this? Like um, a button, okay? So you copy and paste. So now you have two mics. But now let's change this one to reverb for the name. We're gonna keep it on channel one because we can now select this next one. So let's just go to number one. So channel one, command one. And then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna set this to toggle, which since we just duplicated it, that information is already saved there. Same with that stream deck to DAW, DAW to stream deck. Just double check that it's all correct. And it looks good. So we're gonna leave it the way it is. So now this is our reverb MIDI controller. So for me, my reverb here is on send A 
in my return send tracks. <laughs> return tracks, it's send A. So we're gonna click on send A right here, now it's selected, and then you're going to hit that button right there. So now this is now controlling the reverb. So if we hit that button on the Stream Deck, we're gonna get full reverb, which isn't necessarily what we want, because if we're using a return track, as you can see down here, the reverb is set to 100, right? And so here, maybe we only want halfway, because we don't want to sound like we're like super far away. <laughs> so the way you change it is you just go to your MIDI controls again, click on that. So it's, it's highlighted here. See, it's channel one, command one, reverb. We have a minimum and maximum. So our maximum is set to zero. And let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so I usually go around the 15 mark, somewhere in there, depending on what my reverb is. Um, I usually use the Valhalla Vintage Verb, um, but in this case, I'll just show you on the basic. Uh, Ableton 1, <laughs> the stock reverb. Okay, let's set it to 15. And then, so now, when we hit it, it's just gonna go to 15. So, this is where I was saying, you just get creative and do whatever you want. So like if you want to add delay and you want the delay to come on at the same time, what you would do is you would click the delay and hit that exact same reverb button and map it to the exact same command. And now you have reverb and delay on the same button. Let's, and let's set our reverb or our delay to like 24 something. I don't know, whatever you want it to be. I usually do a little less delay than I do reverb. Okay, so now when we click it, it'll bring both of them on at the same time. Ah, see? Cool, and then I'll turn them both off at the same time. So yeah, just get creative and do whatever you want. You can just start MIDI mapping everything. Just go crazy. <laughs> That's what I did. And uh, yeah, it's super easy. And then if you do end up getting the foot pedal from Elgato 2, it's the exact same thing. You just go into the Stream Deck here. There it is, Stream Deck pedal. And then you can just do the same thing. Copy and paste those same exact MIDI control change buttons that you already made. This is what mine look like. So I set my um, icons to look like an off and an on switch, just so it's an easy visual thing for me. So yeah, I set my mic to that, and those, that one's actually mic effects, but um, yeah. And then you do the exact same thing. Set your channels and your, your command number, and then go into Ableton and set it up too. And like I said, you can do your foot pedal, you can select it and put it on this same exact one here so that that button will also do the same thing as this button, which makes it easier for a loop setup because if you need to do something quickly, you need to be able to push it from multiple different spaces is what I've noticed. So I like to have the same buttons in different locations, the buttons that do the same thing in different locations so that no matter what I'm doing, I can reach a button from wherever I am and whatever I'm doing. <laughs> Whether I'm playing a guitar or playing a piano or violin, I can use my foot, you know? So that's why I do it that way. That pretty much covers it. I hope this tutorial was easy to understand and I hope that everything made sense. And if you see anything that I missed or uh, if you have any issues or something, just feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to try to help you out and see if we can figure it out. And um, if you have any other suggestions for future tutorials that have to do with Ableton, looping, anything like that, uh, let me know. I would love to make some more tutorials for you guys to try to help out with this stuff. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. I post a lot of music related stuff, whether it's covers, originals, looping videos, looping tutorials, and I even have some uh, product reviews and stuff too. So check those out on my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.